let's talk now about how to actually get a graph on our graphing calculator. The first thing to note is, in order to graph on the calculator, our equation has to be solved for the independent variable. If our equation is in slope-intercept form, we're good to go. So I'm going to show you an example, and I'm going to graph it by hand first, and then we'll see how to get a graph that looks like this on the calculator, because it's actually a little bit tricky. Here's a simple equation, y equals x minus 2. The slope, well, invisibly, x has a coefficient of 1, so our slope is just 1, if we want to make that look like a fraction, 1 over 1. Our y-intercept, We have minus 2. Our y-intercept is negative 2. Okay, so just on a basic set of axes, here's my y-intercept. Down at negative 2 on the y-axis. And then I want to go right 1, up 1. So here's another point. And then here's my line. So this is what it looks like graphed by hand. How do we graph that on the calculator? First we'll press our y equals button. And then we'll enter our equation. We don't need to put that 1 in. We just wrote that in so we could see the slope. x minus 2. Okay. Now to get the graph, we'll just press the graph button. Hmm. Okay. We notice that doesn't look quite like our picture. In particular, notice that in our picture we see a slope of 1. But on the calculator, that slope looks shallow. It looks less than 1. The slope on the calculator looks shallower than it really is. What if we want to really see what the slope looks like? Well, if we press this zoom button, and the option we want is this option number 5, z square. And now we see that at least the slope looks the same on the calculator and in our picture. Let's see another example. Let's say we want to graph y equals 3 fourths x plus 200. Let's try it. y equals 3 fourths x plus 200 and I hit graph. What do I see? I don't see anything, do I? That's no good. Why not? Let's see what values of x and y are actually showing up on my graph. To do that, I'm going to hit the window button. Oh, well, there's the problem, right? When x is 0, y is going to be 200. But my y's are only going up to 10. That's not going to do me any good. Let's make a quick table and see what y values I might be interested in. I'm just going to get the table on my calculator. Oh, yeah y values in the hundreds are the values I'm going to be interested in. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my window, right. and I'm going to say, okay, you know, if y is hanging out up near 200, 
it's probably not going to go down below zero. I want Ys from zero up to about 200. Um, and then, okay, let's just look at the graph and see what happens. Oh, I only see the bottom part. Maybe I want to let my Ys go up to about 400. And there are a couple of things going on. One of the weirdest things is, why don't I see marks on the y-axis? Okay, I'll tell you why. This, this number, y-scale, sets how far apart the marks are going to be. If they're only one apart, well, then your calculator screen is trying to fit 400 little marks onto it. That's no good. Let's try maybe a mark every 50. Now, another thing that happened is that line looks really flat. Why did that happen? Oh, I didn't change the x's. Right, now this length is 400 long, but this is still only about 30. That's no good. I'm going to choose zoom square again. Notice Zoom square only increases the minimums and maximums to make things fit. So if you choose zoom square, all of the points you used to be able to see, you'll still be able to see. But now I've got that solid line on my x-axis. I don't like that. I'm going to set x scale to 50 also. Okay, now that's a nice looking graph for this equation. That's a nice looking graph for y equals 3 fourths x plus 200. If I wanted to copy that graph onto a piece of paper, I would note that there was a tick mark every 50. So when I was marking my axes on the paper, I would make sure to label all of my tick marks counting by 50s. And then I would use my y-intercept and my x-intercept in order to copy the graph.